What is up? Grumpaholics. Larry G back to do a proper fly tying tutorial for you. And I'm gonna, the first fly I'm gonna tie, I'm going to tie is going to be the, the actual pattern, this pattern right here, that I caught uh, my first redfish on, on the fly. Um, it's basically a uh, kind of a Merkin style sand flea pattern. Um, I kind of stole it off the internet and modified it, and it worked. First time I threw it. So, um, we're going to start with hooks, of course. Uh, let's see if you can see that. These hooks are from Umqua. Um, this is the X-Series all-purpose XS410 hook. Um, that's what it looks like right there. The other call numbers are N15X. And that's a size 1 that I'm going to tie this on. I am going to use Vivas dot fluorescent orange thread for my tie. I don't think the camera does this justice. It's actually super bright orange. And the reason that I'm using that color is because if you've ever seen sand fleas, the females carry eggs with them and they're bright orange. So that's why I chose that colored thread to tie with. Um, we're gonna start by just starting our thread on the hook. Trim off our tag end. And what I like to do is I like to build a couple little dams, thread dams up here to hold my eyes in place. And the eyes I'm gonna use, you can use whatever eyes you like. Um, I've got some straight silver brass, um, which are these right here. But I'm going to use, uh, I've got some lead eyes, they're painted, dumbbell eyes, uh, they're pearl with black eyeballs painted on the end. And that's what I used on my actual first pattern, so we're going to do that. Not sure that it makes a big difference, but however you like to secure your eyes is great. And again, I'm going to use that those two little thread dams to help hold my eyeballs in place. And I like to figure eight until I get the eyes straight, symmetric, and then uh, just make some wraps around the base of the eyes. I, I find that helps keep them from rotating and spinning. And then maybe a few more figure eights here. Kind of bump the camera. And then we're just gonna take our thread to the back of the hook. I like to kind of start it down the bend a little bit and then I'll bring it back up. I'm gonna do a couple layers of thread here. I find that instead of making it smooth from front to back and going back and forth, it, it gives my tying materials more to grip onto when I'm tying so they won't spin. Again, that's personal preference. You can do whatever you like. Um, okay, we're going to tie in what would, could imitate potentially legs or claws. And I am going to use, uh, that's not what I'm going to use. Let me find those legs. I just had them here. Oh, here we go. So these are Arbor Anglers. And they are silly legs, perfectly barred pearl silver. They're almost uh, translucent. You can kind of see through them with black bars on them. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to take one strand of that rubber leg. And I like to tie my legs like so. I like to... Just fold, double it up around the thread and then lock that into place where I want it, like so. <clears throat> and I, I was kind of long on this first pattern I tied, so that's what we're going to do here. And I still have enough for another fly. Um, I'm going to follow that up with some flash, 
just a little bit, not a ton. And for that, I am going to be using Crystal Flash in medium brown from Hairline Dubbin. That's what you're looking at. And again, the beauty of tying flies is you can use whatever patterns or uh, whatever materials and colors you like, but this is the pattern that caught my first redfish on the beach, off the beach on the fly, which was pretty amazing. I'm gonna double that up. So now I have four strands. Same thing, I'm just gonna lock that into place. Come forward with a couple wraps and I'm gonna trim that a little shorter than my legs. No particular reason. All right, now I'm ready to tie in my legs. I'm gonna tie in three sets of legs. And what I'm going to use is, we're gonna use some ultra chenille in tan, right here. That is uh, ultra chenille standard in tan, also from Hairline Dubbin. Pretty standard stuff. And I'm gonna tie in three sets of legs. The length of them right now does not matter. I'm gonna end up trimming these down. And I'm, same thing, I'm gonna figure eight these in. Now you can tie these on the bottom of the hook as well, so we could turn the fly upside down. And actually, let's do that. We're just gonna flip this. Let me straighten that hook out. And then we'll tie in our three legs, three sets of legs. Try and be careful not to catch the point of the hook doing that like I just did. Get those secured. And just wrap forward to the spot you want to tie in your next set of legs. This particular piece of um, ultra chenille has a bit of a curve in it because of how it was in the packaging. I'm gonna try and tie that on here with the curve down. In this case, facing up with the bottom of the fly facing up. And again, I'm just gonna figure eight that. And the reason being the material's already got that pre-bent curved effect going from the packaging. So it'll, it'll help cup the legs downwards once we get them trimmed and the right length that we want. So that's two sets of legs. And then we're gonna pin on our final set of legs. And we're gonna leave these legs long for the time being and just work around them. Same thing, we're just gonna figure eight this guy in. And now we have three sets of sand flea eggs or legs. <laughs> Now we have three sets of sand flea legs tied on with bright orange, with, which imitates the color of the eggs. Um, at this point, I'm just gonna wrap backwards without touching my legs, keeping them secure in place. One more in front there and then I'll come around the back. Okay. Get that flat in the, I don't have that perfect rotary vise, so, but the Regal works pretty well. I like the, I've, I've been tying on a Regal forever. Okay, so three sets of legs. There you go. All right, at this point, I am gonna take some pink McFly foam. So this is the packaging that McFly foam comes in. This is actually cream colored, and this is pink. And again, um, this is exactly how I tied the fly. That worked, so we're gonna do that again. And I am gonna tie in a small piece of McFly foam on the tail end here. Hoping to represent, kind of represent an egg sac. I'm gonna trim this short. Make sure I don't get any of my crystal flash. So this is just gonna be a little tag on the back. That's it. That's what you're looking at. 
And I could have tied that on first. Be honest with you, I forgot. But it shouldn't shouldn't have a big effect. Okay, now I've got pre-cut sparkle yarn and tan. Same thing, I'm gonna figure eight this onto the hook. Now that I've, I've spun the hook back upright, and these are gonna get tied onto the top of my hook. And this can be a little tricky. You just wanna kind of weave through and miss legs. Okay, um, so you're just gonna figure eight these pieces of sparkle yarn. to create your body. And you gotta be kind of careful here. You don't wanna catch the legs. But we're just gonna tie in one piece at a time, one section at a time. If you have room, uh, you can probably tie, depending on how full bodied you want the fly to be. Let me bend this leg back. Um, you can probably tie in more than one section per segment here between legs. Okay, finally got that caught properly. And again, you're just weaving and uh, figure eighting in between leg segments. I actually like to do enough to where I can see the orange thread on the top here. Uh, just makes it pop a little more. So I'm probably gonna do like five, six wraps here. Make sure that's secure. Come through to the next section. Tie in another set of legs or another segment of uh, sparkle yarn. And these legs are gonna be trimmed. They're not gonna be this length when we're done, but I, I find that leaving them, leaving them long during this process of the tie makes it a little easier to work around them. You can grab them and get them out of the way a little easier. And we're gonna do one more section of sparkle yarn right behind the eyeballs. And we're gonna figure eight that in as well. While we don't catch our legs. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Bit of a mess, stuff all over the place. Um, I am going to also tie in a couple strands of sparkle yarn in front of the eyes. So I'm gonna cut another piece of that real quick. I can find it. And we will tie that in, here we go. So this will be my final segment that I'm going to end up using for body. Again, you might not want to tie this particular piece off the front of the fly, but that's how I did it and it worked. So a couple whip finishes. Okay, trim that off. So this is what we have so far. Okay. I'm going to pull this sparkle yarn up and my legs down. Because I got I to gotta trim my legs. All right. So here we, here's what we got. Three sets of legs, 
accessible. And I'm gonna trim these now, trim them to length that I want. So three sets of legs. And at this point, I am going to take a lighter and I'm gonna burn the ends of these just so they taper and they look a little more natural. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're done here. Just a quick pass. So those legs now, the ends of the legs are rounded. And I managed not to burn my sparkle yarn. And then at this point, we're gonna take our brush and we are going to start creating a nice full body by brushing out this sparkle yarn. And I'll spare you, I'm gonna just kind of blow through this, but you're gonna, you're gonna brush out this sparkle yarn until it gets like fully fluffy. All right. So, starting to look like a troll doll. <laughs> so I've got my sparkle yarn brushed pretty well. And at this point, we're just gonna trim this. And I'm gonna trim it. A little shorter in the front and the back. And again, it's kind of Merkin style. If you've ever tied Merkin crab. So we're starting to get some shape here. You can fine tune this. Once you, once you do your big trim, you can start fine tuning it, get the shape you want. Maybe a little more off the front, a little more taper. So that's kind of what we're looking at. That's the pattern. That's the, uh, the grumpy sand flea right there, version one. <laughs> Get my legs popping down a little bit better, but yeah, that's it. Tie a couple up, let me know if they work for you. I think they're gonna be slayers. I, I mean, I really like the orange thread, how it pops and looks like a potential cluster of eggs on a female sand flea. So it doesn't have the body, you know, it's not full, but man, that fish ate it. I mean, I let it lay on the bottom and the fish came over and ate it. Boom, that was it. That is the grumpy Merkin style sand flea. Think we're good. I think we're gonna leave it as is. Just a little bit off the front there, even up this side. Yeah, that's it. All right. Hopefully you tie some up and they work for you. Tell me what you think. I don't know if I could tie it better because it worked the first time I threw it at a redfish, so. LG, the grumpy panhandle fisherman with my Merkin style grumpy sand flea. I hope you like that. Leave comments below. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you out there in the salt, you guys. The reds are just now, well, they've been up on the flats now, but I just got back in town, so the reds and the trout um, are back up into the shallows, so we're going to have some shots fly fishing here. Uh, probably early next week, maybe tomorrow, if I can talk the wife into getting out there, so um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm out.